Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Linney here, and I have the Rocky Balboa of Profit First. Mr. Rocky, how are you doing, my man? I am doing awesome, Austin. Great to be with you today. Great to have you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I like to let my guests kind of tell their story, and we'll kind of get you started where you want to go with that, and then we'll kind of go from there and see where it takes us. You got an hour? <laughs> I just, you know what? I, you know what? I, you know what? Somebody asked me. I'm going to make day, it small. Hey, what somebody asked me the other day, they said, "What is your podcast like? What What do I need to know?" And I said, "It's a conversation to nowhere." <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a step back. I'm an okay. immigrant to the United States. I came okay. here when I was a little kid. My parents were starting over for the second time, and they essentially had. Uh, $25. So we were on the wrong side of the tracks. But very quickly, I saw them and their friends start to move up the economic ladder. And one of the things they did as an immigrant community was come together and talk about how do we create the American dream? How do we figure out how to live here? How do we handle the financials? So how do we earn and spend? And so for me, those were normal conversations growing up. We were always taught how to negotiate, how to live a, um, a luxurious life on a next to nothing budget. And I just assumed everyone learned like that, <laughs> you know, and so I go to school, I get out, I, I get a right reasonably decent job and I start building wealth. And I'm always in the back of my mind, I always as a kid, I wanted to be a millionaire and I'm always looking around going, I understand we're in America. Why aren't there more millionaires? Why aren't more people successful? Why aren't more people building wealth? And I came to realize that money is a taboo topic. People don't talk about it. There's a lot of emotional hangups with it. And it doesn't matter whether you're born rich or poor. Um, Rich kids got money hangups too. They got their whole bag of crap that they got to handle, um, which leads to all kinds of addictions and problems just on that end. You think they have it perfect. They don't. There's all these expectations on them. Same thing at the other end of the spectrum, though. You know, you try and you grind and you don't get anywhere. And, you know, you blame yourself instead of society and the systems we're in. So once I kind of figured that out, I just started learning about what are those mindsets that people have around money? Why do people struggle? And um, now I kind of give back and help people with money. And then my biggest aha was when I learned that business owners were just as bad. I just assumed if you were in business, you understood the business of business. Mm -hmm. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> so it's, it's, a lot it's, it's, of yeah, it's interesting. I I would say maybe I'm a maybe psychology is in my blood and, and it's in my coaching business. But my favorite thing, my favorite topic right now for sure is behavioral investing. Like why people do what they do. The psychology, money. Morgan Hazel was an amazing book. Like understanding that at at its core, your emotions about money is running your life, right? Yes. I just, I read that too. Yes. The behavioral, your emotions about how that money makes you feel instead of being detached from it and just letting the, letting the business tell you what it needs to tell you from a P and L or, or spreadsheet case. You know, what's interesting. There's a business owner I interviewed in London and then I interviewed uh, Sophie Castillo, Bobby Castillo's wife the other day. And she said that Bobby won't walk in any of the properties because he doesn't want to get emotional about it because he just wants to look at the numbers. He's not the first one I've heard about this. And I'm the same way. Like, does this make sense? Do I know it? I don't want an attachment to it. 
And it's funny when you're so skilled and you, and you know about how money works and you can understand it, you know, you can spend a million dollars or on an asset or something that quickly by looking at a PL sheet. And I, I would imagine that's something in your expertise and your film work that you can, you probably don't even need the name of a business to, to, to be able to, to look under the hood is what I mean. I, all I need to see is their accounting software. I just need access to their accounting software mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I need to be able to go in, run reports and then dig into the numbers behind the numbers. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will look at the first level and they'll go, okay, that all looks good. They're profitable. I will go dig and keep drilling down to the transaction level because I want to see where that money's actually going. Things can look great up top, but when you dig underneath, you'll find out they aren't what they seem to be always. And, and so I'm looking for anomalies. And, and when you do that, and you've done that with multiple businesses, what is the overarching? Are there some themes that you see? Yeah. So number one theme, horrible bookkeeping, mm -hmm. garbage in, garbage out, right? I can't tell you how many companies, guys like, I got no money. I'm struggling. I'm like, well, your accounting system says you made hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> Where'd that money go? <laughs> yeah. So number one is bad bookkeeping. Number two is even if you've got good bookkeeping, no one's paying attention to the numbers. I'm a seven figure business owner. I can afford that. No, no, you can't. Um, and I think that's a big problem is too often. Everyone's focused on top line. It's very few people who are focused on bottom line and it's not easy to get a good, clear picture of what the bottom line is. And that is kind of where I think a lot of people struggle. They don't have that clarity of what's actually going on down at that granular level. And that's all that matters is the bottom line. I don't care how much you're bringing in in the top. Mm -hmm. I care how much you're keeping. And what is the process for an entrepreneur or a solopreneur to start the process of cleaning up that mess? So I think the first question you have to ask yourself is, is this something you want to do or is this someone you want to put an expert in the seat? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think for many business owners, if you've got emotional baggage, just like the, the gentleman you talked about, he doesn't want to walk in the house because he knows it's going to get emotional. If you're going to get emotional with money, make sure you have a good bookkeeper, make sure they're actually reconciling your accounts every month and that when you look at the reports, they actually match what the bank balance says. Mm -hmm. And just having that is, is number one. And then if you're not great at the money part, find somebody to sit in the money seat. Someone's got to sit there. It, it could be your spouse. Spouses are real good at telling you you spend too much money. Mm -hmm. um, or it could be a business partner or somebody else, but someone's got to sit in that seat. It's usually not the bookkeeper and not the accountant. There are exceptions. There are some great bookkeepers and great accountants who actually understand how to talk the language of business. But a lot of times it's not that person. Yeah, I agree. And I think through trial and error and loss of money, I've realized that I'm good at filling the tank. Like meaning like I'm good at driving the sales and the networking and those aspects, like in our Airbnb business, my business partner, like loves spreadsheet, loves the tax codes, like, and he like watches every dollar he's down to the cent. Like literally this man is like the most important person in my entire life. Like, like there's no more important person than him. And I am more than happy to allow him to live in what he's great at and then vice versa. And so you have somebody in the money seat. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And that's why it works. Yeah. And it takes self-awareness as, as an entrepreneur. That's really the key. And I think more importantly, it's a key strength in everything, every aspect of your life, because nobody's perfect. And we're, we're just going to search the realm to keep pushing our skills and, and, and figure out what we don't know and, and just be okay to take some feedback and be coachable, right? I think it's like a, a really important strength when it comes to building businesses. And that's very true because there's so many different parts of the business. Nobody can be perfect in all of them hmm. and no one expects you to be. And there are parts that you love and there are parts that you hate. 
So don't do the parts you hate. Find the people to help you do that and then trust them. But verify, make sure that it's truly what they say. Yeah. And before you worked what you do now with Profit First, when did you find the book? Did you did you remember when you found it? I found the book probably four or so years. At, well, has it been about four years? Yeah, probably about four years ago. Mm-hmm. That was my aha. And it was one of the reasons that I pivoted. I was like, what do you mean business owners don't understand the business <laughs> of business? And then it was like, okay. And then it took me a while to, to truly come to grips with that. And so I started having a lot of conversations with people in the business, like the accounting side and so forth going, is this what you're seeing? Is this true? And then I was trying to figure out where do I want to sit in that space? Who do I want to help? And how do I want to help them? Mm -hmm. And so that took a while to figure out. I'm not the fastest guy on the block. Um, And then I finally made that pivot and I looked at other companies that do things similar to what profit first is. Mm -hmm. And I just realized from a cultural fit, from a mindset fit, from an opportunity fit, partnering with Mike was the best thing for me and Mm -hmm. for my skill sets. And what's interesting about his writing, and I'm, I'm just talking for purely me because I've read a lot of his books. I am I know I don't have to meet the man to know we are very different human beings, (laughs) very different, but his writing for me works. Like I get it. Like in my opinion, somebody that's not a numbers guy or CPA can wrap their mind around and yeah, it's meaty, but the concepts of the book are, you know, like clockwork, you know, I love clockwork. It's very consumable. And that's what I think makes a great book. It makes a great product. You know, Mike is not really a numbers guy and you know, he can't be trusted with the keys to the bank account. That is crazy. I didn't know that. (laughs) Yeah. So Mike had a company that actually was, um, they did the, the financial investigation of Enron. Okay. And he then sold that company and he walked away with millions of dollars and then he blew it all. (laughs) To the point where they were coming to take the cars in the house. Yeah. And that's what started him down this whole new journey. And through that period, he went through depression, drinking, all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. And then through that, he's like, okay, let's figure out how to do these things. And let me write the books and teach people how to do Mm -hmm. these types of things. Mm -hmm. So that's where Profit First came out of, along with all the other books that mm-hmm. he's written, he's like, let's figure out what's the best way to do this. And let's teach entrepreneurs how to do things correctly. And so that's where a lot wow. of it came out of. I love that. And so the book that basically y'all promote and, and works in your, your profit for certified, all that stuff on a, on a, on a higher level than digging into like certain chapters in the book. What do you think are the principles of that? book just for the audience uh, of kind of how to approach uh, a business to make sure that you're working, you know, profit first per se, for lack of a better word. So you remember how I said we kind of had the same values, the same principles. Mm -hmm. I've used the principles of profit first for the last 30 something years. Okay. So what are those principles? So the principles are to a pay yourself first, Mm -hmm. not last, B, set up a system and automate your system and and literally take money away and hide it from yourself Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and put it where it belongs. And there are no surprises in life. So plan for those types of things and learn to constrain yourself to live on less. So one of the underlying principles is Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law basically states that we will all use up all the resources allocated. Right. So a kid gets a book report. He's got three weeks to do it. He takes three weeks to do it, which is a total lie because he blows the first 17 days, probably the first 19 days. Right. And then you squish it in in the last day or two. You hit your deadline. Um, Same thing in business. You know, 
I got a project. The first thing the saleswoman guy wants to know is what's your budget. And it's never under budget, right? It's always at whatever I tell them the budget is. Yeah. How long do you need this in? Whatever I tell you, it'll that's when it'll get delivered, probably late. So if I say a hundred thousand dollars, it's gonna cost a hundred thousand dollars. If I say 10 grand, it's gonna cost 10 grand. I say six months, it takes six months. I say three weeks, it takes three weeks. So if you constrain yourself through that process, then you're still going to be as happy. You're still going to be as successful, but you're just doing it on less. And so that comes back to lifestyle inflation, which we all know. I don't care how much you make. You always spend a little bit more, right? It's the same. These principles are all the same. So it's literally about constraining yourself, which is how I built wealth. I always lived on less than I made. What an amazing concept. Oh, well, you know what's funny? <laughs> I, I was on somebody else's podcast yesterday, and I said, listen, <laughs> I said, you, you want to put down the books? I said, put down, never read a book again. Don't turn on another podcast. You don't need a mentor. You don't need a coach. I'm going to give you the, 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 the secret to an amazing life. <laughs> Live on less than you make. <laughs> Drink water. <laughs> eat something healthy. Be nice to people and move your body 15 minutes a day. Oh, my God. I just unlocked the keys to the kingdom. (laughs) What a complex argument, right? Life is pretty simple. Doing simple is hard. Ah, that's a shirt. How's everybody doing, guys? I want to talk today about our sponsor for May. You know, a good friend of mine, Mark Simpson, runs a company, uh, Boostly.co. Dot UK guys, everybody knows that I'm in the short-term rental space for many years. And I think one of the reasons, one of the quotes he said to me was, you can't build your real estate on somebody else's property. And it really resonated with me because we are so reliant on an Airbnb, a home away, these systems, right? And in headed into this year, it's very important that we get direct bookings and they're the best in the business at this. So in 2021, everybody needs to be building a website to create direct bookings and you can't rely on Airbnb plus you're giving them a ton of money. And so 64% of all the websites are powered by WordPress and these uh, private message companies that offer you the free website, they're not on WordPress. And so it's this trick that they're doing. And, you know, these guys are the best in the business, the best in the world. And I'm not just saying that uh, because I use them. I'm saying that because they are. It's the simple fact is that they, they service over 600 clients worldwide and you need to get this done and you can get it started for as little as 99 bucks a month. And you could do that with one property, a hundred properties, but you need to be capturing emails. You need to be sending uh, direct marketing back to these guests. And the way to do that is to create a website. And these guys are the best in the business. When you get direct bookings, you're saving money every year and the profit margins can be exponential. And so if you want to learn more about them, head on over to boostly.co.uk slash construct your life. Not only is Mark a great entrepreneur and CEO, but he's a great person as well. Yeah. It's it's so, you know what, what I've done now there's, there's, there's that book that you held up earlier, Behavioral Investor and Failures in Business have taught me two things. The number one thing I default to now is what's the simplest way? Mm-hmm. Frictionless, what's the simplest way? And the second thing, and this kind of hit me like a, like a, if a house fell on me, but from Behavioral Investor, you're not special. <laughs> you are not special, meaning... The product that you're selling, the service you're selling is the special thing. And I read a book called Build the Sell, and it was amazing. And it made me realize that if you're if you're the special part of your business, you don't have something to sell. You don't you you don't have anything. It, you have a it's not a commodity. You it's you wrapped yourself in your own prison. So so true. Yeah, it's it's it's. It's a very hard thing, 38 years, it's a very hard thing to understand. But when you understand it as an entrepreneur, it gives you the freedom to operate and almost get your time back, right? And we're so quick to 
there's nobody wants to wait anymore. Like we don't like as we're not a society of like wait. Nobody can grow. You, you can't you can't suck out the gate. You have to be you know the lights have to be perfect on the podcast. Everything has to be amazing. You know, or or ten people are telling you like, hey, you didn't do it right. And there is some beauty in the progression steps of life that I think has been lost in this technology age of America. Things take time. And so in order to build wealth, at least the old fashioned way, the way I did it, it it is literally a time game and it's a compounding game. Mm -hmm. But those things take time. And I think if you're impatient and you don't let compounding work, you will find that you will never get wealth because you keep starting the process over again. Mm-hmm. And that becomes really difficult. So I'll give you an example. If I take a penny and I double it 32 times, how much money do you think I'll have? I have no idea. Guess one little teeny penny double 32 times. Double 32 times. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm just math, not my strength. So. Math that, yeah. So that means you need a numbers guy in your business. Good. So I now that God we've I solved one, yeah. that, <laughs> here you go. A penny double 32 times is $42,949,672.96. Now, here's where it gets interesting. How much is a penny doubled 16 times? You would think that it's probably somewhere around 24 million, like half, right? No. And this is where the power of compounding is. A penny double 16 times is $655.36. So at this point, you're like, huh, I did this penny. I doubled it 16 times. I got nothing to show for it. I quit. Right. Here's think about it. A penny doubled. Right. So if we're looking at $43 million on Double 32, the day before it's 21 million and change. The day before it's 10 million. The day before it's 5 million. The day before it's two and a half million. The day before a million and change. All of the growth comes at the end. Warren Buffett only had like a billion dollars in his 50s, right? He had another 40 years of life there, 35 something years of life that allowed him to amass what he did. But you're not going to get to the end if you don't keep going at the beginning. It's like Mm -hmm. taking an airplane, right? You get on an airplane, pilot says, we're ready for takeoff. He hits full steam on the engines, right? You're sitting there. You're not even moving yet because he hasn't let go of the brakes. Next thing you know, you're halfway down the runway. You're doing a hundred and something miles an hour. The plane is shaking and you look out the window and you're still on the ground. You're like, holy crap. But if you wait, right, what happens soon? You're off the ground. The nose starts to come up. The next thing you know, you're flying. And like three minutes later, ding, ding, you can go to the bathroom. You know, here come the beverages. But that doesn't happen if you halfway down the runway go, oh, well, we're not taking off. Slam on the brakes and shut the engines down. That's a that's a metaphor for life, because I believe that people are they're half into something like I mean, I, I, I kind of want to do this, like maybe I'll do this. And then they like, oh, they, they go down like two years and they're like, OK, well, like I'm not seeing the success that I need. Like, I love it. Like Andy Frisella, who I follow and listen to his podcast, he talks about in the first 10 years of business. They didn't do over $65,000 total and he was sleeping in his office and now they're doing 500 million a year, like, you know, 23 years in like, wow, that escalated quickly. Like he needed a lot of help those first 10 years. (laughs) You're right. He did. But, but, but what's interesting is that, but we don't even, we as people don't even allow it to get that far. Because we've switched, 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 switched so many times. You're never going to get to double 32 if you keep switching. What happened if he had quit after 10 years and go, I made 10 years, 65 grand. He'd still be a bouncer. He'd still be a bouncer at the club. Yeah. (laughs) You know, it it is people don't talk about it. Overnight success has 10 years of hard work behind it. Mm -hmm. And nobody sees the 10 years of hard work that you've got to do. 
they'll, they'll, they'll congratulate you in the beginning and at the end. There's no, there's no clapping going on in the middle. <laughs> you got to keep showing up. I mean, that's just the, that is the reality of what it is. If you had, I know you said your principles and I love those, but if you had any advice to anybody starting a business, what, what would you give them? So I think most people who start a business have all the wrong ideas. Right. So I'm going to start a business. What's the first thing I need? Oh, I got to do a business card. Well, now, okay, now I got to create a logo. Hmm. Now I need a website. Now I need a name. Now I need uh, an office. Now I need that. No, 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 no. The first thing you need is a sale. Go out and get somebody to hand you money for whatever it is you're selling. And then start to do everything else. You don't need all the, the, the other stuff is the busy stuff because you're afraid to go sell because mm-hmm. you're afraid to make the cold call, knock on the door to tell the world, Hey, I sell X. This is what I offer. Are you willing to buy it? Are you willing to talk mm-hmm. to me about it? Mm-hmm. And the more you do that, the more you can figure out. So here's the problem. The, This is what I learned in the financial coaching business. Just because the world needs it doesn't mean they're willing to pay for it. So I can teach you how to be a millionaire, but it's going to take you 10 years. People don't want to hear that. Everyone wants to be a millionaire this weekend. And so they're not willing to pay to learn how to be a millionaire in 10 years, even though it's pretty much guaranteed success. They all want instant. And so again, You've got to figure out, is the market willing to pay you for what your offering is? Mm -hmm. I have a, it's a very interesting concept. I have a a Airbnb client who's my bigger Airbnb client, who's very proficient in SEO. And they have like a ton of subscribers, like a million plus on YouTube. They make a ton of money in their business. And he said, the problem with a lot of people in business is they don't even know that somebody wants their thing. (laughs) And what, so what he prescribes to is he creates a waiting list and he lets the need for that thing or that class or that course dictate whether or not he even does the work necessary to execute on that idea. Like he creates, like, is there a demand for it? And then he builds the the boat instead of building the boat and hope people get into it. So in the world of real estate, they do that a lot, right? Mm -hmm. If let's say you're going to go buy a property and you're going to rent it out. Mm. Well, you can create a rental on someplace and say, Hey, we have this house for rent at $1,800 or whatever the number is. See how many people email you. If nobody emails you, you don't have a business. You don't have a rental, Mm -hmm. right? If you get a hundred emails, you know, Oh, there's a hot rental market and people are willing to pay $1,800 for that property. Mm -hmm. You know, the people who do mobile home parks do the same thing. They test market, Mm -hmm. you know, is there demand? Is somebody willing to do this? Now, I don't think you can do that necessarily with Airbnb Mm -hmm. because you actually need a place to get on Airbnb, Mm -hmm. but you, you know, there are ways to do different types of things That's the other thing that I think people freak out about. They go, oh, there's so much competition. Well, that also shows you've got a proven market. So in real estate, there's a million competitors and there's a million people making money because that's how big the market is. You're so in your, whatever you want to call it, like you're so in your real estate stuff, like, oh, my buddy talks about real estate. My buddy and my buddy does this, right? And you think, oh, everybody's doing it. And I'm going to let you in on a secret. (laughs) That's not the case. (laughs) And, 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 and there's, there's, there's always room for the best. And like, perfect example, we got a construction company that we're building the first couple houses in a different way, a lot faster than other people are going to be doing. Like, so from, we go from, we can build 30 days opposed to people are doing six months. And I don't need to test out the market because the market has already told me that there's a lack of inventory. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I don't need to go test out the market. And what we're doing is creating the same product everybody else is, but at a faster speed. So we've knocked out two 
indications that there's a need for it. And so that's very easy to step in front of and sell that idea because we know the market needs it opposed to opposed to you hanging on your your need to feel validated in your idea and i think a lot of people die on that sword have you ever read this book dane maxwell i have not it's been i know so here it is this is business in a nutshell customer uses a mechanism to get a result right he says forget this and die a slow painful death here's the problem Everyone focuses on the mechanism, right? I'm the Mm -hmm. best at doing X, Y, Z. Here's the problem. Nobody cares. The customer has a problem and they want a result. If you focus on the customer and their problem, you offer them a result and they're willing to pay you, you can go find somebody to be the mechanism. Nobody cares what the mechanism is. Right. So you got to watch. I want to know what time it is. I don't care how the watch works. I just need to know what time it is. And that's where I think a lot of business owners get it wrong. They focus on the wrong part of the equation, focus on the customer's problem and how you can give them a solution that they are willing to pay you for. Austin, I'm a client where I feel stuck in who I am. I'm unhealthy. My relationship with my spouse is failing. Can you fix that? Yes, I can. Okay. Boom. Here's money. When you solve that and it's easy to see and you can flip the switch. You know what's interesting in the real estate space? You want to know the the top coaches that get the most. It's so easy to spend the money on the course and so easy to pay them and they're everywhere. Flippers and wholesalers. Because that is a tangible, this guy's going to teach me, There's, he says that I'm going to make this much money. And so the point from A to money, A to B or A to money is so easily seen and your ambiguity to keep what you, the actual, what you do, and you can't sum it up in one sentence is actually probably keeping you from creating more revenue in your company. By the way, so uh, there's a couple of things I don't believe in spending education on. Don't go to college to be an entrepreneur. Just be an <laughs> entrepreneur. It's you take the 200 grand and just go do it. Yeah. If you want to learn how to flip a house, flip a house, flip a house. It's okay if you lost <laughs> money, you will come out way ahead of anything the course will teach you because you will have done it. Like, I don't care how many books I read on playing golf until I pick up a club and swing at that terrible little ball. I'm never going to learn how to play golf. It's an amazing point because we become a society of I'm going to see, you know what I do just for fun? Cause I'm, I'm a little weird. I have anytime there's a free offer, anytime there's a free book, I click on it. I put it in a Google Drive and I wait for somebody to say, there's no information out there. I just don't know how to get started. You can't find it. I got to pay for this course. And I send them that file and they're like, holy shit, this is amazing. There's books, there's free courses. I was like, yeah, the free information is not the problem. Your need to not act on the information is the problem. (laughs) And here's the deal. You know why they don't act on it? Because it's free. (laughs) They don't see value in it. It, it's so, so, but, but here's, what's interesting, right? If I spend this amount of money, you grab their attention. And so yeah. it's this kind of dichotomy of like, where's the value proposition in the frame of the money and, and people sure show up when they've dropped a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. We are, we are weird human beings, right? <laughs> <laughs> we, we just, we do things. We just, uh, it is what it is. <laughs> we, yeah. The obstacle is the way we like the way. Yeah, for sure. So if people want to find out more about what you do, follow your, your amazing content on LinkedIn. If they want to reach out to you and say, Hey man, is my business screwed? Like where's all the money? <laughs> How would they do that? 
Uh, my main website is profitcomesfirst.com. And from there, you can find a uh, couple free chapters of Mike's book, yes. <laughs> along with a bunch of other free tools. Um, you can find my podcast, Profit Answer Man, which is where we talk about business finance. And then the other podcast is Richer Soul, where we talk about how do you actually live the ultimate life once you've figured out the money mm -hmm. and because the money's not going to make you happy. And so those, all of that is found at that website and Richer Soul and Profit Answer Man are on whatever you listen to podcasts on. You can just do that or just Google my name and I will show up. I love it. Well, guys, if you like this episode, make sure you send it out to your friends and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one -on -one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com. <laughs>